Okay, I'm gonna try filming this video on the cinematic mode version. I don't know, it looks cool. It looks cool. Honestly, I can't even really tell the difference other than it looks just like stuff behind me is kind of like blurred out and maybe I'm a little bit more focused. I don't know. Let me know if you guys like this kind of view. Um, also, just would like to, sorry, my dog is literally choosing to sit right on my feet. Today's drink of choice, not alcoholic. Oh wait, is it not gonna focus on it? Uh, not alcoholic. Typically you guys know I'm shouting out whatever wine I'm drinking. This is a Waterloo sparkling seltzer. So watermelon flavor. Let's try it. Delish. I'm going to be honest. I can't remember a seltzer that I didn't like. I just love a crisp little seltzer every now and then. Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. If you are new here, my name is Heather. And today I'm reviewing another thriller. What else is new? Um, if you're new here, I mainly love to read and review thrillers, but I will read whatever I'm feeling like reading. Um, but today's review is a dedicated review, which is The Angel Maker, which is written by Alex North. This book came out on February 28th. So I'm filming this on March 7th. So it just came out and it was a thriller that I was um, gifted the audio book um, from the publisher, Macmillan. Thank you so much, Macmillan. When this arrived in my email box, email box, am I like, what is wrong with me? When this arrived in my inbox, there we go, words, I lost my mind because I was like, wow, literally, wow, what an honor. Like I freaking loved loved, loved, loved The Whisper Man by Alex North. So like seeing this come in my box, I was like, oh my gosh. So I jumped right on this book, honestly. Um, I really thought it was gonna be either an add-on or the book of the month choice, but sadly it was neither. But I don't know, sometimes just also having like the physical copy is just amazing. Not gonna lie, I kind of am digging the cinematic view. All right, buddy, go on. Go, Lena. You're all right. So the actual tangible book is 336 pages long. But like I said, I listened to it on audio. Um, this took me roughly a week to listen to, which in my notes here, that's why I keep looking over here. Uh, I wrote that's about average for me. But I will say I didn't even, like I did not even film a February wrap up because I only got through two books that month. But I will also say that Hogwarts Legacy came out, the video game. So I was playing that for a little bit and then my February was just like wild and crazy. But I would say a week for me to listen to an audiobook. I don't know, that seems a bit, that seems a bit quick. But anyways, I am going to go ahead and read the synopsis for this thriller. So if you do not want to hear that, then just go ahead and skip forward a little bit. And when you see my eyes looking back at the camera, you will know that I am done reading the synopsis. So the synopsis for The Angel Maker is a dark, suspenseful new thriller about the mysteries of fate, the unbreakable bond of siblings, and a notorious serial killer who said to know the future. Growing up in a beautiful house in the English countryside, Katie Shaw lived a charmed life. At the cusp of graduation, she had big dreams, a devoted boyfriend and a little brother she protected fiercely. Until the day, a violent stranger changed the fate of her family forever. Years later, still unable to live down the guilt surrounding what happened to her brother, Chris, and now with a child of her own to protect, Katie struggles to separate the real threats from the imagined. Then she gets the phone call. Chris has gone missing and needs his big sister once more. Meanwhile, Detective Lawrence Page is facing a particularly gruesome crime. A distinguished professor, eh, a distinguished professor of fate and free will has been brutally murdered just hours before firing his staff. 
All the leads point back to two cold cases, the gruesome attack on teenager Christopher Shaw and the despicable crimes of a notorious serial killer who, legend had it, could see the future. Okay, so that being said, I liked this book. I didn't necessarily love it, but it's probably, no, no, no. It is the best thriller that I've read so far in 2023. Um, and I feel like I've read a decent amount of thrillers, but I am still rating it a go get this book now. It's just like not a complete five star book for me, but I would say it's a, like at least a solid four for sure. A solid four stars. What I absolutely love about Alex North's writing is that he's able to integrate those creepy kind of like horror moments into his writing. So there's, you know, like even the synopsis kind of hints at like, could this serial killer really see the future? And if you're familiar with his writing, he kind of um, does the same thing in The Whisper Man and The Shadows. He kind of integrates like a little bit of a horror or like magic kind of like realm into it. I feel like ma magic isn't the right word, but almost like the impossible, like things that don't happen, but he somehow makes you feel like they're happening within his thrillers. So I find that really cool because it's just like a unique thing that I feel he's able to successfully accomplish. So it's like, I'm reading a thriller. Yes, it's about a serial killer and you know, these two like linked crimes, but like, is there this like element of the impossible like also happening he also has a way of writing about insanely disturbing characters and his books are not for the faint of heart you need to have like you know what's the i've been teaching all day and i feel like my words are just escaping me you can't have a weak stomach is that like the phrase i don't even know you got to be able to like really read some like gruesome graphic scenes if you want to try out his books because you know his thrillers are definitely gruesome. Was the overall premise unique? If you watch my recent video for The Couple Next Door, I'll link it up here, um, that was just me reviewing a very hyped up thriller that's been in the game for a minute. In that video, I talked about how I feel like a lot of the recent thrillers for me have just been like feeling the same way. Like I haven't really feel like I've read something like super unique. So that's why I personally am just trying to read a little bit more of like different genres. Like I've been delving into fantasy a little bit. Right now, it's taking me forever to get through, but I'm reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow because I know it was book of the year um, for book of the month. But, sorry, this is like the longest thought ever. Basically, thrillers just aren't doing it for me right now, and that could be a me thing. Um, I know some have commented that like they have been feeling similar and just like that they're really like appreciating older thrillers because it just feels like, I don't know, I just feel like I'm not being amazed, I'm not being wowed, like everything kinda is just like feeling the same for me lately. So I will say this book did feel unique in the sense that like it was, it's the typical like gruesome graphic thriller, but what's unique about it is like these different aspects that, you know, we don't really see in other thrillers like could there be like future telling in this book? Did somebody have, you know, an ability that isn't real kind of thing? Like it felt unique in the sense that as you're reading it, you're kind of having those different types of thoughts of like, what is actually going on in this book? Like, where is the author going with this? The thing that I really appreciate about Alex North is he's able to just combine everything that he's doing and like wrap up his books so nicely. I feel even though like I wasn't a massive fan of The Shadows, I did love The Whisper Man and I feel like he successfully did that with this book as well. If I have to pinpoint a part of the book that I wish would have been a little bit like better, like what I feel like could have been better. Hold on, adjusting myself. Um, 
I feel like there was there was a part towards the end of the book where I actually had to go back and listen to it again because I was kind of confused about like what was happening. But that wasn't, I don't know if that was much more of like a book thing versus it was like a me thing. Like I, I think maybe like I could have been listening to it on like a faster speed when everything was happening and I had to like go back and listen to it to kind of like clarify what was happening. Um, I'm not sure if that was also a mix of like me just trying to remember which characters were which and like which ones were somehow like connected with each other. I remember that being a little bit of it as well. It doesn't have like a ton of characters, but uh, just kind of like the connections of the characters, if that makes sense. And that is it for my non-spoiler section. Um, so for those of us who have read the book, I am going to get chatting um, with spoilers. If you're new here, I will link a thriller playlist up here for you if you wanna check out some of my other videos. And if you could hit that subscribe button before you leave, I would much appreciate it. Guys, I'm looking at my notes and I truthfully don't have like a whole ton for my spoiler talk. I mean, like obviously I really liked the book. That part of the book where um Katie's daughter kept saying like red car that's kind of what I meant in the spoiler section of like they're like I know the serial killer is the one who was apparently able to tell the future like what we're hinted at with the synopsis but with the daughter she was kind of having that like premonition but also like having seen the car I don't know it was giving me very like chilled I was just like chilled to the bone reading it because it was making me think of the whisper man um that child in the book like I feel like he was trying to tell his dad about stuff that he was seeing in that book as well so I don't know whenever they like bring kids into it with anything like that it always just scares me like the kids are trying to warn the adults so this is something that like actually I feel like we've seen a lot of in history and just on TV shows, actually, if anybody's watching The Last of Us right now, episode eight, I believe we see this theme as well. But I felt like the overarching theme of this book was how like some people get really, really crazy about different aspects of religion. And then they think that they are just this powerful, all-knowing being. And then they get other people to kind of uh follow them and then just you know chaos starts happening but basically that's kind of what I felt like with this book like there was that theme in this book where he felt like you know he things were already set in the universe like things were already happening um because of a higher being's will so yeah I mean is that theme new? No, we see it and have seen it all the time. But it was just interesting to see that that's how the antagonist was being provoked in the story. And that's basically all I had. So let me know what you thought about this book. Um, and as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.